Welcome back to Life Enrichment with Hank Ballinger. Today we're going to talk about two ways to make life simple. Now, I know there's probably hundreds, maybe thousands of ways to make life simple. We're only going to go over two of those today, but life can get complicated. As many of you know, you wake up in the morning, maybe you have 10 things to do today. Maybe you rush around, you get nine of them done. You think, well, that's pretty good. Tomorrow I won't have as many and just to have one carried over from today. And then tomorrow you get up and you got 12 things to do plus the one you had from yesterday. And you say, well, I'm really going to get up and bust it out. I'm going to get the 12 things from today. I'm going to get the one from carried over from yesterday and I'll be done. And then the next day you get up and you have 15. It seems like you're constantly getting covered up with more and more stuff to do. That's easy for life. Life happens. So today we want to talk about two ways to make life simple. But before we get into that, again, thank you for those who uh, uh, watch the channel, for those who subscribe. Uh, if you could hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, tell others about us. If you could share us on Facebook, it'd be great. We really appreciate the efforts. Now, I want to tell you a little bit, uh, as mankind was coming out of the Renaissance and, uh, or out of the Dark Ages into the Renaissance, man was coming out of a time where the average person was discouraged from thinking. It was almost like if you come up with an idea, the king or the royalty was going to take the idea. If you grew extra crops, so maybe your family would have a little more then the royalty is going to take it. You had the royalty and the peasants. And if you're a peasant, you can't get ahead because anytime you try or anything you have extra, the, the royalty is just going to take it. So you had a two-class system and anything that the poor class had, the rich were going to take it. Discourages the poor from ever trying to get ahead. They're just going to lose it. But one of the things as we came out of the Dark Ages... We call that the Renaissance. It means the, light, the uh, era or time of enlightenment. So man was enlightened. Man had the idea, hey, let's start thinking. And it was a great time because many people were able to progress. And one of the things that happened in Europe and later on in America, the average person could get ahead. And that, that encouraged industry, that encouraged the idea, the average man to think and to get ahead, to have something, and he could profit from that. Great time, the Renaissance. Now, one thing about the Renaissance, the average person and the idea started going around uh, because it was the age of enlightenment, a lot of philosophers and a lot of different philosophy went around. One idea was this. We are born into this world. We have no choice in the matter. We are forced into this life against our will, maybe. At that point, as a baby, we don't even know. We don't have will. We're just, we're just here. But nonetheless... Once we are born, possibly against our will, but at least we don't have a choice in the matter. And even though we don't have a choice in the matter of whether we're born or not, we are forced into a world where we have to make decisions. We are forced to make those decisions because that's what life does. And even if we decide, I am not making any decisions, we are making a decision to not make decisions. We have to make decisions. Life is interesting that way. We are forced to make decisions. So since we have to make decisions, shouldn't we try to make life as simple as possible? If we've got to make these choices, let's make them as easy as possible. I want to show you what I'm talking about. Since we are forced to make decisions, Make them easy. Make them simple. I have seen so many people in life work and work and work, and they work really, really hard. Seen a lot of good workers, a lot of good people. 
But you know what they do? They just work, work, work all their life. And you know, sometimes they will die even before they reach retirement. They work all their life and they have no fruits of their labor or not very much. And then they die before they really get to enjoy life. Seen that happen so many times. So let's make life simple. First of all, the first really great choice that we need to, to look at is we need to serve God. Now, there may be atheists or agnostics or various ideas or cults out there. They don't believe in a God, whatever. I'm not going to appeal to those people because as soon as I mention God, I'm turned off. But let's say possibly there is a God. And after the, rena after the dark ages, going into the Renaissance, there was that philosophy. We're forced into this world and we have to make decisions. Well, one of those decisions, me as a Christian, I think we have to go over the idea there either is a God or there isn't a God. If there is a God, I need to serve him. If there isn't a God, then we evolved and we're no better, no worse than the animals. But nonetheless, we're very similar to the animals. We just live, we're here, and we'll die, and we will cease to exist. I don't think that's the way that we got here, nor do I think that's how we're going to end up. I believe there is a God, and I believe we should serve Him. Now, with that idea, we need to be honest with ourselves. We need to serve God. Now, if there is a God, as I believe there is, and I think that He is a immensely intelligent God. Now, an immensely intelligent God would not only put us here, but He would put us here with the idea that He's going to leave us something that tells us how to serve Him. So we have the Bible. As Christians, we have the Bible. Now, as a Christian, this is really simple. It is not hard. Look at this. As a Christian, serve God, read the Bible, do what it says. That's not hard. That is not hard. Now, is the Bible extremely simple? That's written on about, on the average, if you take the Bible as a whole, written on about an average third, fourth grade level. But we can make it more simple. We just read the Bible. We do what it says. Now, there are a lot of people that's going to disagree with, I think the Bible says this, I think the Bible says that. Each and every individual has to read the Bible and come up with their idea of what it's saying. Now, could you read commentaries or some other Bible helps, Bible tools that can help you to understand what the Bible is saying? Yes, you can. Today we have a lot of those. If you could see my library, I have a bunch of those. But we need to figure that out. Read the Bible, understand the Bible, and do what it says. Now, there are a lot of people that will disagree with you. That's okay. That's their prerogative. But you need to be honest with yourself, okay? There will be a lot of contrarians out there. A contrarian is somebody that's just going to disagree with you no matter what. They, they may disagree with you just because they like disagreeing. But some people just love to disagree. But you need to be honest with yourself. Read the Bible, study it, understand it, and do what it says. Contrary, even if your mom and dad or your grandparents or your preacher or somebody disagrees with you, that's okay. You need to do what you understand it to to say that you need to do. Pretty simple. Now, that's the first simple, basic understanding of life. Serve God, read the Bible, and do what it says. Pretty simple. The second one is everybody needs money. We are in a world, and just like we were born and we are forced to make decisions, we are in a world that uses money. Now, most of it is currency. I, I get that. It's not really money. Money is backed by some tangible item like gold or commodities or oil or something like that. 
<coughs> we have a currency system which is backed by nothing except our government saying it's worth that. All money around the world is not money. It is all currency. There is no money in the world. It is all currency. There are no countries that have a tangible backed monetary system. It's all currency. But nonetheless, we're in a world that uses currency. So we need to understand that currency. We need to, to get a grasp on how to use this system. Now, money problems are some of the biggest problems people will have in life. It causes divorce. It causes a lot of problems in the home. It's amazing how many problems are in the home just because of money. We don't have enough money. The bill collectors are coming. We're being evicted. We're not able to make our house payment, our car payments. We don't have enough money for groceries. Happens a lot. It's a big problem. So we need to get a control of this money situation. Now, can we do that? Yes, control your money. Money makes a good servant, but it makes a bad master. If it's controlling you, you've got a problem. Now, maybe you got that credit card and it's real easy to swipe that thing. I'm not really, it doesn't really cost me anything. Not until the end of the month. And then I can swipe it several times before the end of the month. But eventually I'm going to max this card out. You know what I can do? I can just get another card. It's got zero balance. I can charge more stuff. And then when I get that one full, they will give me another one. They will continuously give me another one. And I can just keep maxing them out and getting more stuff. But you know what? Eventually, I'm going to get to where I can't make those easy monthly payments. I won't be able to make them. And then all my interest rates are going to go up to about hmm, probably somewhere around 20 to 28%. Now I really can't make those payments. So... Money makes a terrible master. So you've got to figure out how to make it your servant. Now, here's an interesting statistic. In America, there are 1,700 millionaires in today's time made every single day. How is that possible? That's never happened in the history of the world. It's never happened in America until recently. How's that possible? Well, one way is just what you're doing now. If you're watching this video, you're watching a how-to. How do I become wealthy? How do I get control of my life? That's exactly how many people are doing it today. They're going on, uh, on their phones. They're pulling up YouTube. They're pulling up all kinds of social medias. They're, they're watching and they're learning and they're coming up with a plan and they're devising that plan and they're following that plan and they're becoming wealthy. They're getting control of their life. So like I said earlier, two ways to make your, your life very simple. Serve God first and foremost. We're, here, we're in a world, we didn't choose to be here, but nonetheless we're here, we've got to make a decision. First of all, best decision, serve God. Second decision, since we're in a world that has to deal with money, get control of that money. Figure out a way. That way you have time to do a lot of other things in life you want to do. You can be as philanthropic as you want to. You can give as much money away. You can't give that money away if you don't have it. If you're poor and you're broke all the time, you can't even help yourself, let alone somebody else. But if you do control that money, and you have extra, you can help others. Nothing wrong with that. Many would call it very good. Listen, two ways to get ahead in life. Serve God, get control of your money, and it will make your life much easier. And you can become Redneck Rich. See you on the next video.